going to read a story by Bob Hartman. It's called Let's Hear It for the Church. Let's hear it for the church. OK, so it's had some negative press recently, like the Simpsons Reverend Lovejoy. Thank you, Marge, for showing me that there's more to being a pastor than not caring about other people's problems. But where did we get the idea that it would be perfect? Not from the Bible, that's for sure. The church in Corinth was dirty with divisions and immorality, but Paul thanked God for it. And I want to thank God for my church too, the church I grew up in, for Kathy Miller and the indescribably delicious biscuits she baked for every wedding and funeral and bridal shower these last 30 years, for my dear departed and ever so slightly insane grandmother who taught the junior boys class like she was directing a B-grade horror film. That's right, it was the firstborn who died in the final Egyptian plague. And which of you boys are the firstborn in your families? And for the whole lot of them who held us and cried with us when my dad passed away a few years ago. There are more that I could name and plenty that you could name too, who were there just when you needed them. So let's hear it, let's hear it for the church. And let's hear it for the bride. OK, so she gets shot down sometimes, like Uma Thurman before she slipped into that bright yellow jumpsuit. But where did we get the idea that following Jesus would make us popular? Not from Jesus, that's for sure. If they persecuted me, he said, can you expect anything better? No, he dresses us up and prepares us and makes us beautiful, not for the world, but for his eyes only. And that's a different kind of beauty. It's the beauty of a church in pain, arrested and beaten and imprisoned in China and Africa and across the Middle East. It's the beauty of a church with principles that knows right from wrong and will not bend with the changing winds of social and political convention. And it's the beauty of the person sitting next to you as well, who hangs in there, believing and praying and trying to do what's best when much of the rest of the population laughs and makes fun and scratches its head and simply doesn't get it. So let's hear it. Let's hear it for the church and let's hear it for the bride. And let's hear it for the body. OK, so it's a little out of shape, a bit like the before pictures in the latest diet fad ad. But where did we get the idea that it would be super fit and sleek? Not from Paul, that's for sure. Most of the churches he wrote to were puny weaklings. But that's the point. It's only by God's grace and God's power that we become what we never could have been on our own. And the horror is not that we mess up sometimes. That's to be expected. That's what grace is for. No, the miracle is that we sometimes get it right and the poor get fed and kids find a place where they are accepted and the sick get healed and marriages get saved and the grieving are comforted and people just like you and me find God. People often say to me, and I know what they mean, I love Jesus, but I just can't stand the church. And what I want to say and what I ought to say and what I'm saying right now is this, how? How can you say you love Jesus and not love his body? So let's hear it for the body, all fingers and thumbs sometimes, but the body of Christ nonetheless. And let's hear it for the bride, beautiful and broken and unbowed. And let's hear it. Let's hear it for the church.